Hey guys, Larry Chen here. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're actually in Nagoya at the Toyota Museum. The thing about it being the Toyota Museum is that it's not all Toyotas. It's so many other cars. We have like this 300 SL Gullwing behind us. We have this awesome Porsche 356 here. The point is, it's all about automotive culture. So this actually kind of reminds me of the Henry Ford Museum that is in Michigan. It's not just Fords, it's like everything. It's basically like the American Museum. They have cars, of course, but they have so many other things. I'm gonna kind of take you guys along. Of course, uh, this is kind of just like a little taste of what's here. Um, realistically, the best thing for you guys to do is to come here to Nagoya if you have a chance to check out this museum. This is kind of one of the fun things that I always like to talk about. The fact that I've actually never seen a stock Model A. Oh, and this is a Japan made one. That's so cool that it was made in a plant in Yokohama. But like, I've seen so many modified Ford Model A's, but the fact that this is what it looks like stock, you really can't tell if it's like super modded, it's like a rat rod or drag car or whatever. It's really hard to tell what it is just because so much of the metal has been taken out. But um, the fact that there's a stock version of it here is super cool. Toyota Model AA. This is before it was Toyota as a, with a T, modeled after US cars of its time. The three headlight Tantra Model 87. Um, I have a kind of a funny story about these. So I was on Jay Leno's CNBC show where you basically, it's called Stump the Car Nerd. And then basically I had to guess what car I was riding in. Uh, Jay would blindfold me and he would take me around in different cars. This one stumped me pretty bad because I was feeling around it and I felt the two headlights really close together. So I felt like it was like a, a like a bug-eyed Sprite or something where the headlights were super close together. Turns out it had three headlights. I had no idea uh, until I actually lifted the blindfold, but I've never even heard of the Tatra before that show. This is, I guess, the first generation Toyota Crown. We just got the Toyota Crown again in the US, but it's cool to kind of see where it started from. Looks pretty luxurious inside. Love the suicide doors in the back. But the thing that I thought was funny is that it actually has like this badge in the back that says overdrive. It's um, interesting to see that it's not only in the US where there was an era where you would just kind of put features like ABS or the badges on the car. The Cadillac Eldorado. I couldn't imagine driving this around Japan. Can you can you imagine just driving this land yacht in the US, let alone in Japan? Look how crazy this thing is. Pink Cadillac. Absolutely massive. Looks like a spaceship. Look at the interior. One mile per gallon. Jeez. What a car. This is so cool. What a great example of a FJ 25L. 1957. So cool. Love the Toyota Land Cruiser. So simple. 
Look at this thing. This thing looks like it has bicycle wheels. 1955. It's so lightweight. I love this car so much. We have one of these at the Peterson Museum in LA. Look at that. Two seat offset. One sitting forward, one sitting kind of in the back. One piece, like a, like a bathtub or something. Seems like we're coming up on the area where it's probably my favorite part of the museum so far. Um, we have a lot of these cars that now I can picture myself driving. Like I would totally drive this uh, Honda N360, 1969. How cool is that thing? It just, it, plus this looks like a brand new vehicle. It is so pristine inside and out. The seats, all of it looks brand new. The glass, amazing. That's um, sitting next to this uh, Datsun Fairlady. So cool. 1.5 liter of the L, what is, I wonder if that's an L engine. But anyways. L15, who knows. Combining a Bluebird chassis with a Cedric 1.5 liter. How cool is that? This is in such good condition too. Like a brand new car. Like Concorde restoration. Whoa, this third seat is crazy. Look at this. What an interesting way to have another passenger. <laughs> That is so cool. Third street, or third seat is just sideways like that in the back. Amazing. I didn't realize a S500 was even a thing. I know there's a S600 and a S800. The S800 is what I actually shot with my buddy Daniel Wu. But now I know there's a S500 and um, I guess that comes from comes with a 531 cc motor revs out to 8000 rpm at 44 horsepower oh i had no idea first passenger car made by honda what great condition too i bet this would be so much fun to drive i thoroughly enjoyed driving daniel wu's s800 the shifter actually looks pretty similar. So cool. Honda S500. Who, who would have known? I had no idea. All right, it's too easy to say that this is without a doubt my favorite part of the museum. Oh my God. I see a 240Z there. But um, without a doubt, the 2000 GT is definitely the highlight, I feel like. There's just, there's just not many of them in existence and it's just so cool that there's just one sitting here in pristine condition next to the S800 which I've only seen a couple of these. I've seen, this might be the third one I've ever seen. 790 cc's, 45 horsepower. 1965 this thing is so cool Ugh. you know this is gonna be sacrilege but maybe uh, if somebody makes a replica of the s800 and also the 2000 GT I think it would be so cool to see one modified to see what it would look like on nice wheels slammed to the ground but a replica not actually ruining a, a real one but I would love to see like a, a stanced out version. <laughs> I think it would be kind of cool. Modified 2000 GT. Okay, so this is a 432. A real 432. Ridiculous. Amazing. 432. Four valves, three carburetors, two cams. 
amazing. In really good condition too. Who knows how much this thing's worth. That is so cool. Real 432. I'm... I'm so happy to be able to see this here. In the Toyota Museum. Definitely can't overlook the Cosmo. Uh, Leno has a very, very clean example that uh, runs and drives fine. And then, of course, the original Nissan Silvia. I love this color so much. I've seen... This is my third one that I've seen. I've seen one that uh, a buddy of Mirasan has one that's actually a little modified. He actually made a, a like a FRP hood for it. And the other one I've seen at the Zama collection, and then this is the third, third one I've seen at the Toyota Museum. Okay, while well, the old school JDM section is super cool, I think this might actually be my favorite section. There's so many really cool cars here, including this 1981 Toyota Sora. I love it. Love the color combo. The seats are absolutely incredible. They actually look super comfortable. I love these so much. 2.8 liter Toyota Sora. There are so many other cool cars here. Um, like this um, Toyota Hilux with the uh, with the camper set up on it. So so cool. Love the love the simple livery on it. The Toyota Previa, or they call it the Estima. This is really, this is really awesome. I love these. In the U.S., they had a supercharged version of that. <laughs> That's next to an LS400. It's the car that gets beat up in uh, Street Fighter. This is really cool. This is uh, the LFA. I can't believe I had a chance to drive one of these in white in Singapore. Such an iconic vehicle. So cool to see one in here in this condition. A lot of 80s and 90s, like the row over here is all really, really important and cool cars. Of course, the Miata. You know, there's the R32 here. Of course, this one looks like it's in pretty perfect condition. This one's a 1989 model. Really, really clean. Paint is immaculate. Um, it looks brand new. And that's uh, parked next to this 190E. Love these so much. Love the color. And of course, there's an A86 here. You can't have a Toyota Museum without having an A86. Or um, this one is uh, has 11 front end. 1983. So, so, so cool. Just look at those seats. They look like recliners. They, they look like you could just fall asleep in them. But this is just so cool because this is a car that is such a pedestrian car. Like, who had the foresight to save this car? This thing is in such good condition. I'm assuming it was probably restored. But um, the way it sits here, I mean, I would drive this every day. There's so many cars that I would just take, pluck from the museum and just drive, um, including this 1981 Audi Quattro. Love it in white. What a beautiful vehicle. Love those wheels. I just like seeing these in its original form. It's also insane to me how big this vehicle is. Um, that's parked next to this, uh, I think in the U.S. they call it a 323, but um, they have they call it a Familia here. This is awesome too. This Renault, Renault Five. What a cool car! And then that's parked next to this Ferrari 512 B B. It's a huge vehicle. 1979. What else do they have here? They got this um, 
the Honda Civic CVCC. Another car I would drive every single day. So cool looking. Can't forget about the NSX NA1. Without a doubt my favorite NSX, no power steering, less sound deadening. Feels so much more fun to drive, even though it's five speed and it's less power than the NA2. This area of the museum is something I can really appreciate. The original Gran Turismo, they got the Hornet Jr. My first RC car was the Super Hornet. But look at this, Game Boy, Mario Kart, DS, Nintendo Super Famicom. First uh, original PlayStation. How cool is this? Look at that F1 model. But this uh, area of the museum is dedicated to car culture and like trinkets and look at this. This is such good photography. Original RX-7 advertisements. And then CRX. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that tour. We'll end on the DeLorean here. This place is so cool. There's just so much to see. You can spend a, pretty much a whole day here. They have a cafe, they have a nice gift shop. I'm actually gonna rummage through it right now to see if there's anything I want. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.